All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is to create a React project, and this can be done by npx create React app and then the project name. I have already created a React project and I'm calling it Hello Redux. Currently, I'm inside the actual React project folder and I have not really installed Redux. So let's go ahead and do that. npm install Redux. Now keep in mind that right now we are installing just the Redux as an independent package and that's it. The Redux, as mentioned earlier, can be used without being React. It's an independent library. So you can use it with JavaScript, plain JavaScript. You can use it with some other project. You can use it with some other libraries like Angular. Redux can be used independently with anything else. Now, once the Redux is installed, then we will install React Redux, which is for integrating React with Redux. So that library is required and it is created uh, by the React team to implement or to integrate React with the Redux library. So it makes things a little bit easier. So you'll see that after installing npm install Redux, we will do npm install React Redux. Okay, so Redux install, then we have to install npm install React Redux as mentioned earlier, this library is going to allow you to integrate React with Redux. So let's go ahead and install that also. Okay, that is done. Now let's go ahead and open up our project. And our project looks kind of like the same. We have an app.js which contains some default code. What we'll be doing is we will be working on a counter application is always a good idea to start very simple. And we will see that how we can change the counter value from different components. So instead of passing the value down or up or between the siblings, we are going to be getting or updating the value in the Redux global state. And whichever component is interested in getting the value, they will simply read the value from the Redux global state and then display it, okay? So let's go to our index.js and we will start by integrating Redux with React. In order to do that, we will need to create a store. So we will do import and we will import a function called create store from Redux. So create store is a function on the independent library called Redux, and we are going to import that. Now we can go ahead and create the store by calling create store. But we do need to pass something to the create store, something that can update the store. And if you look at this diagram, you can see that the only thing that can update the store are the reducers. So in other words, we have to create a reducer and we have to pass the reducer right over here. But right now we don't really have any reducer. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder and I will call it store. Inside the store I will call and create a new file. I will call it reducer.js. I'm not making it capital letter R or anything like that. And the reason is that this is not really a component, it's just a JavaScript file reducer.js, it doesn't really have to be called reducer. It can be called anything that you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna say reducer. Now reducer is nothing more than a function that takes in a state and an action. And it returns you the updated state. So right now I'm just gonna return state. So reducer is nothing more than a function that takes in a state, that gets the state, this is a global state, and the second parameter argument is the action, and it returns the updated state. It will be a good idea for us to provide some sort of initial state, which we will do later. And then let's go ahead and say export, uh, ex, ex, default export. So let's go ahead and do default 
or I think it's export default, export default reducer. All right. Now currently we don't really have any global state. So what do we want to put in the global state? Well, we want to put the counter value, right? So we're going to create an object. We will call it initial state. And in that we will create a counter property initialize it to zero. And then we can assign this property right over here. Now this syntax is more of a JavaScript syntax. And this syntax is basically saying that if state is null, then use the initial state, which means the counter will be zero. But if somebody is passing the state or the state is not nil, then don't use initial state. So it's a one-time deal only when the reducer is initialized for the first time. So now we have the reducer, we can go to index.js and we can start using the reducer. So we will just go ahead and pass a reducer. You can see over here that we are also importing the reducer right here. And now we have created a store. This is great. But we need to pass this store to our components. And the good thing about passing the store to the component is that you don't have to tell every single component that there is a global store, there is a global store. No, you only have to pass the store to the root, the, the top level component in the hierarchy, and then it will be accessible by everyone or every child or children of that main root parent component. In order to do that, we will have to import something called a provider. Now this is from React Redux. So provider is a component which is provided by React Redux. And the main job of provider is to provide the store, the global store to the components. So this is my root component right now, which is my app component. I'm just gonna surround this with provider. There we go. Now there is only one property in provider which is called store and you have to pass this property or else, well, it's not gonna work. And there we go. So what we have done is we have added a component called provider which only has one child, which is app component. So this means that the global store is now available to the app component and all the components that are inside the app component which is usually the case, right? I mean, if you are building something in React, you have a parent component, and then the parent component can have other child components, and they can have other child components, and so on. So basically what we're doing is we are injecting the global store right over here, and now all the other child components can access the global state or the global store. So that's great because we are just injecting on the top parent root component, and now, the root component itself, as well as all the child children's of the uh, root component can access the global store. Okay, so this is the setup. Now in the next lecture, we are going to start creating our child components like counter and fancy counter. And you will see that how our components will be able to update the global state and also read the values from the global state.